coverage you can count on. This is WJTV Channel 12 Jackson. Now, News 12 this weekend. Could a suicide in the city jail have been prevented? Good evening, everyone. I'm Nikki Mohan. Thank you for joining us. Leading our news tonight, Jackson police could face a negligence lawsuit in the suicide of a city jail inmate last night. In this exclusive report, the victim's family tells News 12's Beverly Thomas authorities had ample warning. Personnel went by to check on him. He was found hanging by his shoestrings from the front bars of his cell. More than 24 hours later, Coleman's mother says her family has yet to be officially notified from police of his death. She says if it wasn't for his girlfriend, she would have found out from the media. Well, I don't think the procedure has been properly followed on anything. No policeman has been here. I have not seen a policeman. I have not even talked to a policeman. And for his, him committing suicide, if he did, they did not follow precautions. I'm not saying they could have prevented it, but they could have tried, and they did not try. When he was arrested, he showed no signs of being suicidal. So this was a complete surprise to us. However, Stephanie Webb, Coleman's live-in girlfriend of four years, says she repeatedly warned authorities that Coleman was talking of killing himself. She says she's appalled at their negligence. I told them that the reason why he had a knife in his pocket because he was suicidal, he'd been threatening to kill himself all day. And I told him five or six times that statement. And it's like they weren't listening to me. And I just, I mean, I think it was negligent. Coleman was arrested for domestic violence simple assault, and contempt of court on previous charges of DUI. Webb says she didn't even press charges against her boyfriend because they were only arguing, but police pressed charges under the new domestic violence law. She says she warned police Coleman was the one who needed the help. He was supposed to have nothing. I mean, no shoe strings, no shoes, nothing. When, when somebody goes into custody, I thought that's what, you know, they were supposed to take that precautions, whether they've been told they were, su they were suicidal or not. Police say inmates are checked on a regular basis, but the facility is generally used as a holding area. Coleman was scheduled to be transported to the Hines County Detention Center at 1030 Saturday night. Beverly Thomas, News 12, Jackson. Law enforcement officials say since 1987, there have been 47 hangings in Mississippi jails. A tip to Jackson police leads to thousands of dollars in drugs at a local hotel. Tonight, officials were called to the La Quinta Inn off Terry Road. Management told police they became suspicious when two individuals did not come out of their room for several days. But they said a lot of traffic had come in and out of the room. Upon investigation, police confiscated thousands of dollars in marijuana, narcotics, and drug paraphernalia. Two people are behind bars. They are identified as Ernest Wason and Leslie Wason. A shooting in Claiborne County sends a teenager to the hospital and lands one candidate for public office in jail. News 12's John Matthews was in Claiborne County and has more on this story. 18-year-old Anton Hedrick was shot in the back at around 3.30 Saturday morning just outside of Port Gibson. Arrested and charged in the shooting is Larry Clark candidate for the first district supervisor seat in Claiborne County. The shooting happened in front of Clark's home. They have been having problems with uh, uh, this young man, uh, his brother one, uh, coming around their house. And uh, some indication is it's possibly uh, the service is being going inside of the house at night, uh, fooling around with their 15-year-old daughter. The dude shot me, stepdaughter, told me to come up to her house. And I went up there and I talked to her. And when I started walking, she, I just heard a shot, and I started running. The third shot hit me. Anton Hedrick was taken to the Claiborne County Hospital. Reverend Clark was taken to the Claiborne County Detention Center and charged with aggravated assault. Reverend Larry Clark could not be reached for comment. His wife declined an on-camera interview, but did tell me her husband did fire his weapon. But in no way did he mean to hit Anton Hedrick. Do you think he was trying to shoot you, or do you think he was just trying to scare you? Yeah, he was trying to, he wasn't shot me. 
he was trying to kill me. It's just a thin line that we as citizens uh, walk uh, as individuals when we pull the trigger on uh, whether we are right or we're wrong. And uh, I try to make it not a determination of the sheriff to decide whether the individual is right or wrong. I leave us in, in the hands of the court to decide that. Since the shooting, Hedrick has been released from the hospital and Clark is out of jail under $10,000 bond. This case will be bound over to the next grand jury. John Matthews, News 12, Claiborne County. Five people are confirmed dead tonight after a seaplane crash in Rhode Island yesterday. The plane was trying to land just off the shore of Block Island when it crashed into a restaurant. Four people died immediately. The fifth person died after suffering burns over 90% of his body. Investigators are now working to clean up the area. Well, cleanup efforts continue in Long Island after a brush fire swept across 6,000 acres. The Forest Service says 90% of the fire is now contained. Evacuees were allowed to return home yesterday. The, bl the blaze destroyed one home and damaged seven others. Investigators suspect the fire was deliberately set. A canister bomb takes aim at a tourist train in France. This story tops our World in Review tonight. French police found an unexploded canister bomb on the tracks of a high-speed railway in Paris. The targeted train carries loads of tourists on summer vacation. Gas canisters have been used in the most recent wave of terrorist attacks in France by Algerian extremists. Archaeologists in England have salvaged a 13th century trading ship. Scientists are calling it one of the most important findings from the medieval period. The vessel was found buried in mud and its body mostly intact. A study and reconstruction of the ship will take about five years. It will then be placed on display in the National Museum in Cardiff. Closer to home, residents of South Carolina are finding no end to the rain. The remnants of Tropical Storm Jerry are causing heavy flooding. Today, floodwaters in Greenville County, South Carolina, washed out roads and flooded homes. No one has been seriously injured. Residents say this is the worst flooding they have ever seen. Well, Mississippi escaped the rain showers today, and folks at the Ag Museum were glad. That made it wonderful for the fun in the Scottish Highlands. We'll have those highlights next. You're watching News 12 at 10 with Nikki Mohan. Weather with Chip Washington and sports with Edward McDonald. One local high school started school one day early this week, not only for the teachers and students, but for their friends and family. Today was Provine's high school open house. It gave everyone a chance to meet staff members and student athletes. The Parent Teacher Student Association were also installed at the open house. And from high school to the Highlands, the Ag Museum was overcome this weekend by the Scots. The Scottish Heritage Highland Games brought lots of good old fun and tough competition to the area and even set a national record. While I travel free, still my heart kept calling me to the land of... The Scots got off on a high note at the Ag Museum this weekend. Kilt-clad athletes from all over the country came to compete Scottish style. These are the Donny Scots that toss the caber, throw the hammer, throw the toss the sheaf and the weight toss. As a matter of fact, today we broke an all-time record. <laughs> On Saturday, athletes tossing the caber drew oohs and ahs from the thousands that attended. More so because of the intense heat. In its seventh year, the games relocated from November to August to draw a bigger turnout. Veterans say heat is an improvement on past weather. Through the years, we, uh, we've had fire, snow, and, and hail. <laughs> the two years running, uh, we were ankle deep in mud. Uh, then the next year we were scraping ice off the tents at, at, at these games, and then uh, last year at 2 o'clock they washed us away. Yay! First time spectators say the games are great for a date. This couple says the sheep herding wowed them. It's very different, very different. Yeah, it is. About it. Well, it's not something that you see every day in Jackson, Mississippi. By far the most recognizable symbol of Scottish heritage is the kilt, but it gets a lot more specific than that. Each kilt also represents a specific family or clan. The gathering of the clans is kind of like 
an extended family reunion with about 50 families all having reunions at the same time. And lost family members can use the festival to get back to their roots. A Pensacola man set a U.S. national record at this weekend's games. A.E. Puckfont won in the weight toss. He threw a 56-pound weight 15 feet in the air. Local winners include Tim Anderson of Columbus, Mississippi. He won Athlete of the Day. In the dancing competition, 17-year-old Carrie Davis of Jackson and 15-year-old Andrea Oglesby of Brandon danced away with honors. And a college scholarship for Highland Dancing went to Vanessa Tom. She will continue her Highland Dancing at Belhaven College. And one of the big winners of the day was Velma McLaurin of Jackson. She won two round-trip tickets courtesy of American Airlines to Scotland in a raffle to benefit that scholarship at Belhaven. Well, Mississippians returned to the polls Tuesday for step two in selecting party nominations, but a low voter turnout is expected. A Secretary of State spokesman says they're expecting a 200,000 voter drop-off from the August 8th primary. Polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 7 o'clock Tuesday evening. Here's a look at some of the races on Tuesday's ballot. Meteorologist Ken South joins us now with a look at the weather. And Ken, was it uh, was a kilt appropriate wear for today's weather? It was if you're a little bit too warm, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we were in the 90s again today, and we've been in the 90s, I guess, for what the past uh, couple of weeks. Could have used a little bit of that rain from Jerry, but uh, looks like most of that uh, stayed to the east, and it will stay to the east of us for the next couple of days. Let's take a look at the uh, current conditions right here in Jackson. Temperature is uh, 77 degrees. The relative humidity is 79%. Winds are calm and the pressure 29.91 inches. Now, your low temperature this morning in Jackson was 72 degrees. Your high this afternoon back up to 94, a little bit above the norm for this time of the year, but at least we're about 11 degrees below that record for today. We could have used some of the moisture with Jerry, but Jerry decided not to visit the state of Mississippi after all over the weekend. Instead of taking a northwesterly track, it took a northerly track and now actually making its way back out to the east across the state of uh, South Carolina. So it could actually move back out to sea and we'll have to watch that for further development. It isn't very likely, but it's one scenario that could happen. One scenario that's been happening over the past several days is the heavy, heavy rainfall along the east coast. We've seen over a foot and a half of rain from Florida back up through Georgia and the Carolinas and even more is expected over the next couple of days. Unfortunately, we are on the dry side of the system, and all we are expecting over the next uh, day or two, maybe even over the next five days, is just the chance of an isolated, widely scattered shower in the afternoon hours. In fact, what we've got out there right now, just a few band of rain showers across central Georgia associated with Jerry, and then some afternoon-type storms across south Louisiana, but notice how they're dying away and right now we've just got fair conditions across the state of Mississippi. Your basic summertime weather forecast is going to be in place not only tomorrow but most of the next week. And that means temperatures will be in the 90s across the lower Mississippi Valley. Lower to mid 90s for us. Even warmer temperatures though back to our west in the Arklatex. They could be seeing triple digits once again. However, to our east of course with all the cloud cover and rain, temperatures will be kept down into the 70s and 80s. Your best chance of rain in Mississippi will be right along the Gulf Coast with dry conditions over the northern two-thirds. It's not dry though down in the Caribbean. This is Iris, a much stronger system than yesterday at this time. 
very close to hurricane status once again, and we do have watches and warnings out for the Virgin Islands, and that may be issued for Puerto Rico very soon, which is this island right here. The latest on Iris has the top winds now at 65 miles per hour moving to the north. Let's take a look at your forecast now for Jackson for the rest of tonight. We will see fair conditions, a low of 71 degrees and calm winds. And for the second uh, or the first half of your work week, partly sunny skies, isolated showers, a high temperature of 92 degrees and winds from the north at 3 to 6 miles per hour. Your five-day forecast now showing temperatures for the work week in the lower 90s for highs. Lows will be in the 70s and we'll have a chance of rain mainly in the afternoon. Now your fishing game forecast for today, it looks like your best times early, early in the morning and then a little bit later on in the afternoon, in fact, peaking at about 3.30. And I think if you're going fishing, the best bet is at 3 a.m., right, because of the weather? That's when it's going to be the coolest, definitely. Okay, thank you very okay. much, Ken. And coming up next on News 12, we'll have Edward McDonald up with the latest in the Generals. And the Generals look to drill Tulsa. Edward McDonald up next in sports. And Edward McDonald joins us now with sports, and I heard the Generals did quite a job tonight. Did quite a job in getting quite an acquisition. I'll tell you, this should put some people in the stands. And since the Generals have been left out of the playoff picture, why not take your frustrations out on the Tulsa Drillers since they're in town, especially when you've bagged a bit of added power. Houston's Jeff Bagwell, last season's MVP for the National League, will do about four days of rehab work here with the Generals starting tomorrow night. The all-star first baseman broke his hand, you saw it right there, for the third straight year on July 30th against San Diego when ex-Jackson General Brian Williams accidentally hit him with a pitch. Now's the time to come and do a little rehab and regroup. Uh, if we go by what they've done in the past, um, they'll play uh, the beginning of each game and, and then kind of work their way until till the last game to where they're playing full time. So um, that's probably what the schedule will be when they get here. We've uh, fallen behind last year's attendance pace, and uh, I don't know what kind of uh, impetus this will put on it, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of uh, excitement in having last year's MVP perform here for four days in Jackson. Now, Bags will bring about 16 in, um, Major League Big Flies and 66 RBI. That's what happened before the accident. And as an added bonus, the Generals will also get catcher Rick Wilkins. Wilkins had been on the Astros deal for the past month after having back surgery. Now to the place that Bags and Wilkins will be on display. The Generals hosting Tulsa in the last home get stand of the season. There are your MVPs. Kerry Bridges, your MVP. Ryan Creek, Pitcher of the Year. Anyway, Generals score first on this one. That's Richard Hidalgo. He will rip one. That's a shot to left. Melvin Mora and Russ Johnson will both come home to nothing Jackson and that's uh, much to the liking of these guys. Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. You see more stuff. That's their flag football team. Uh, the MVP Kerry Bridges will follow with a single back of the box. Mora will score one more again and Jackson gets the win. Seven to six is the count there. Now to the place, the big, the Astros and um, action play, of, yeah, round yeah. action of the World Series of Golf. Jim Gallagher Jr. just trying to find a life preserver after shooting a 40 on the front nine, how much worse? There's a college gridiron, and with NCAA allegations hanging over their heads, Mississippi State still has one more thing to worry about. University of Memphis, the team they played this upcoming Saturday. Last season, the Dogs got the best of the Tigers over in Elvis's backyard, but that was last season, and this bunch knows that if they worry about allegations, Memphis will get their revenge. Yeah, you know, Memphis, they're going to be tough. They got outstanding defense, and, uh, you know, offensively, they're going to be good. But we, I feel like we're going to be uh, a lot better, though, know, and we're going to be ready to play. Yeah. That's it. And I hope the dogs have that kind of luck. Maybe. I hope the dogs have that kind of luck, but like I said, Jeff Bagwell coming to town. That should put some people in the stands and also give them an added boost going into next year. This is the last home game, home stand of the year for the Generals. Well, good luck to the Generals. Okay. Thank you, Edward. And so to come on these 12, one little gets the American dream, owning a home. Well, tonight, one Jackson family is sleeping a little easier. They're enjoying their piece of the American dream, courtesy of Habitat for Humanity. The second Habitat for Humanity home in Madison County was dedicated today. Several churches in the Madison area began construction last Saturday and in one week's time built this new home. Habitat members say they are happy to help and everyone deserves a chance to own a home. We're an uh, international Christian organization and our goal is to eliminate poverty housing. We believe every, every working person should have a decent place to live. I would just like to thank everybody for um, helping with this Habitat home 
and uh, we're very pleased with it, and I am very happy. Over 70 habitat homes have been established in the Jackson area. Ten more are set for construction before the end of the year. And, well, Ken, hopefully they have air conditioned. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it's going to be warm again tomorrow. Let's take a look at the uh, forecast for tonight. First of all, we'll have fair conditions, a low of 71 in the morning, and then tomorrow, temperature of 92 degrees, partly sunny with an isolated shower possible in the afternoon. Okay, thank you very much, Ken. Sure. Well, thank you very much for joining us this weekend. Don't forget to watch Stephanie at 6 a.m. for the latest. Good night. <laughs>